Drama video essays never end well. Also, welcome to the office. Let's go. Is in praise. Significant B-sides. He makes horror thing video essays from an ostensibly left-ish leaning perspective, though politics okay. tend to only really be a small portion of his videos. Mostly it's deep lore analysis and historical discussion of a genre of film that paradoxically I almost never watch on my own. I've never been a fan of horror movies, even as a younger person outside of like Scream way back when I was in high school and like the classic Freddy versus Jason. It's just a genre that's a good movie much since i saw some kids play soccer with a man's head in hostel i swear i left the movie theater after yo what <laughs> yo that's crazy i ain't no I, I started looking into horror movies a bit more but you know i never really indulged in them either like my mother she loves horror films but me never got into them after that, like, nah, I'm good. This is the end of that phase of my life. I'm done with horror movies. And mm -hmm. I've kept that true. However, In Praise of Shadows is one of my favorite essayists that I found in the last couple of years. Probably because I have no interest in horror as a medium, but I love the concepts and lore behind it. And almost anything okay. I don't know much about, like I'm a dead meat guy, a okay, red letter media a... guy. Okay, you know, I'm actually familiar with these two other channels. I'm good for one of those. I get it. So it's like sometimes, uh, like I know red letter meter, sorry, red letter media, like uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space uh, Kill Count. It's like whenever they do these kill counts, they also explain the kill a bit more too. So it's not just counting, oh yeah, this person died one, two, three. They go into a bit more detail. So yeah. Okay. It meet guy, I'm a familiar. red letter media guy, you yeah, know, red I'm letter media one of those. I enjoy ending explain type videos from various creators once in a while. So In Praise of Shadows, the guy I watch pretty regularly whenever he drops. That said, for whatever reason, in the last year or so, looking at his channel, it seems that after having a lot of really good success early on, he's had a significant decline in views, which I thought was a shame. And I know it's probably because he's talking about horror and he's showing blood and guts and doing all these other things. It makes it hard to you keep too. your you know, energy right with the algorithm. And I thought this was a shame because I know that so many people are like me and would love his type of content. So over the past year, I've been sharing his channel on my own page. It's kind of a way to help out a fellow. Bro, that's real. That's real, bro. Video essay is whose content that's I think real. is really good. And that I think their content would be appreciated by a lot of the viewers that I have. And that was the case when I shared his most that's recent awesome. video called Bad Conservative Horror. What I assume okay. would be a three hour long piece about bad conservative horror movies. And right. I shared this without even watching it, just assuming that it would be that type of video. Now, this oh. is not typical for me. I usually watch things before I share them. And I did announce in the post before I deleted it that ah. I did not watch it. <laughs> I don't blame you, bro, man. Delete that shit. Pretend it never happened. Well, at this point, you can't even do that. Watch the video, <laughs> but I was confident that it would be appreciated by the audience that I was presenting it to. Word. But that was a mistake. Okay. Unbeknownst to me, in Praise of Shadows, hadn't posted one of his usual analytical horror pieces. Instead, he posted what is essentially a drama response video, a long and oh. not so good drama response video, I'm afraid. Oh, and God. I immediately started oh, having flashbacks. God. And you the shared last it. Time I got involved in yep. random white people business and found myself in drama that I wasn't even fully aware of. It is not. Oh my god, bro. I've been watching this channel for a hot minute. A hot minute. Yeah, yeah. But I get what you're saying, bro. Fun. It has <laughs> happened way too much for me. It happened so much, in fact, that I did my own three hour long drama video a little over a year ago. And it wasn't just addressing drama that I, I had been attached one. to at one point in time. It was. I purposely just don't look at drama. Like, whenever there is some drama, if it is interesting i'll check it out but usually it's not so i just like uh, i sidestep also it. a bit different at least that's what i was trying to do with it and those who actually watched it and didn't just react to it we'll get you you motherfuckers in a second would have hey, recognized that it even was though it's not me than your usual drama video my drama video was a bit of a meta commentary on the nature of drama on YouTube and spent a lot of time specifically talking about the leftist progressive section of YouTube that i belong oh, to oh shit yeah, I forgot, bro. We on that side of the internet right now. If you usually watch me, you probably like, bro, why are you reacting to this? Honestly, I just love reacting to, to significant B-sides. Like, I like watching it, literally. Like, I always have this, not always, but I have this channel on and like in the background. And I'm like, damn, this is a good ass video. And I'm bored as fuck. And I was like, you know what? 
It's Wednesday midnight. I ain't got nothing to do. Let's watch a video. And I didn't feel like watching VTubers. So I was just like, oh, boom. A significant B-side video. But hey, I guess we on that side of the internet now. It didn't spend the majority of his runtime attacking people who had attacked me or defending myself from attack. In fact, I even defended a few people that I would call enemies even to today. Word. Defenses that don't enemies look so crazy. good in retrospect. Whoa. Like, that's a whole other video that I would never be making. My goal was to okay. purge myself of the desire to continue to engage in this type of activity on YouTube and online in general, because I recognize along the way that it was a really useless, unimportant and completely like toxic thing for me as a person and also for me as a content creator. And okay. through the video, I was trying to admonish others to take the same route. It's a good video, one of my best probably, and it's still needed today as it okay. was a year ago. However, it's likely that a lot of people don't want to sit down for a three hour video about drama. So I'm gonna to try to take another crack at it here for those of you with healthier consumption uh, habits. And I'm gonna be yes, honest. 23 minutes. And bro, if you're breaking down something from three hours to 23 minutes, there's obviously a lot of stuff left out. That being said, I definitely will probably have that drama video playing on in the background while I play Tekken. I'm gonna be a little bit more direct this time, or okay. not direct, because I'm still not gonna be naming names of any motherfuckers. Oh, never do that. Never I'm gonna be that. a little bit more raw in how I feel about certain things. Sound like drama to me. Because it's nighttime. I am not a stranger you drink coffee at night. I came up pretty suddenly, and as a black man making the type of content I make, I quickly attracted a variety of critics and naysayers who did not appreciate what I had to say. And as I got bigger, Bro, when he talked about Attack on Titan, that shit was crazy. So did the <laughs> amount of critics I suddenly found myself having and constantly seeing and responding to what was 95% ridiculous bad faith criticism. Mostly okay. my responses came in the form of community posts and Twitter, which I'm happy about. Shout out to That's my a wife good idea. who, whenever I started writing a response video, was like, nah, ooh, nigga, ooh, nobody really cares ooh. about some weird things that you said to you on Twitter. That's not what got you views in the first place. Don't Facts. do that. W -Y, and she bro. was right. This is not to say I never got into any drama in my content, but early, it was always connected to a bigger idea. It was always a part of a grander video. It was never just, here's my video responding to insert asshole here, cause yeah, this is how you sound when you make a drama video, by the way. This is why you should never make one. Oh man. <laughs> okay, bro. Because nobody gives a shit. And since Facts. I made that drama video last year, I've barely responded to any drama or beef surrounding Good. me at all Good. on my content. And if it Good. is, it's usually subliminal. Lots and lots of subliminals. Because oh, nobody gives a shit. And Facts. a perfect example of this is within Praise of Shadows. I'm not gonna comment on the drama that he got himself into or the other people mentioned in the video because I didn't watch the video long enough to actually figure it out. And again, I'm a person that's okay. watched every <laughs> single last one of his videos for like the past year and a half, but I couldn't get through this one. I okay. didn't know the people he was talking about. It was so invested. out of the way. It sounded petty. Yeah, and that's it was not what so I clicked out on this the video way. for. Word. I am a regular viewer of his channel and I did not care about this drama he was involved in. As soon as I ascertained that it was interpersonal drama and not like threats on his life and things along those lines, I found something else to watch. Not my, not my issue. You get, you, yeah, you get yeah. me here? I, this I makes sense. what you putting down, brother. I, for one, should know how it feels to be at the center of other people's attacks. Harsh? But I've got this to hear is this. really like good advice for people to catch. And it's not just in Praise the Shadows, by the way. I've seen many a creator, many a video essayist make a video, have it misinterpreted often willfully by a bunch of other people and feel the urge to respond and clap back at these people. But it's never, never worth it. And I think that's okay. a really important thing that a lot. That's a that's a good le a lesson in its own right there that it's not worth it. Even if it might feel good or whatever, it's not worth it. Mm, that's some deep shit, honestly, because there's a lot of people, you know, it's normal, it's human, right? It's in our human nature to try and respond if somebody does something dirty to us right of course but at the end of the day if it involves the internet especially if it is legitimately petty right if it has no bearing on your work your life especially or you know your 
your reality, right? Your perception of your reality. Like, right. If somebody, if somebody says something petty, like, oh, they don't like the way you look or something like that, right? It might hurt your feelings, but it's definitely not something to, you know, go after somebody else about. Mm. But I can see why some people do it. I, I can honestly see it. A lot of creators who are actually creative, that's something they need to hear. No one cares about our drama. But or more true. importantly, Nobody gives the viewers you should care about the most as a video essayist type creator do not care about this type of drama. That is lesson number one about most YouTube drama if you're actually talented at making videos or at least drama regarding a lot of people in my sphere of influence who like the type of content I make and consume. Like if you're over here watching me, you probably don't actually care about drama. You'll watch maybe one or two videos but that's not what you came Holy here for. Holy shit. How the fuck does he know that? Because he knows his audience, which is actually pretty good on the creator to know who their audience is. So that's a dub. That's a big dub. This video is probably not going to get a lot of views because people are going to look at it and say, who the fuck are these people on the cover? That's a win for me. It may not that's be dub, for this video, bro. but that's exactly how I want this shit to work. That video Facts. about drama oh. that I spent. So me making a reaction video was not in the plans. Got it unless it's in the plans for certain reactors because it ain't for me like i'm legitimately just watching it because fuck it i want to make i make youtube videos legitimately i make youtube videos i don't make content i, I of course like yeah the vtuber stuff is fun and yeah it's something to do so it's a win-win but honestly everything i do is just for fun pretty much like just this video for fun the vtuber videos even though are kind of like a job, it's also still fun, right? Like if I, that's why I stopped doing it daily. Cause it's like more fun if I'm just like, oh, I wonder what VTubers are up to and I watch it, right? So yeah, definitely not for me, but in case it is for me, I'm gonna have my diss track ready for you. <laughs> Months working going, that's nearly three hours long, has half as many Sarcasm, views by the way. Sorry. as another video Some I did a few months later about an obscure rapper from the late 90s that nobody has ever heard of because people really don't watch me for drama. And it's funny because whenever you make a video engaging in drama, people accuse you of doing it for the views. I saw the video he was talking to, I, I talking about, I honestly didn't feel the need to watch it because I'm gonna keep it real. His audience is like, I'm on the younger scale and I'm 26, right? So I'm pretty sure everybody else is the same age as the creator, which is normal. But go and look at like the drama videos for a lot of significant YouTubers, or at least from my perspective, it's drama videos about me and drama videos I've made. They're usually not huge hits for insert person here, unless that person really doesn't have a strong following, which I'll get to in a second. You know, no shade, a little shade. Little shade. This is related to something I said in like the video essay video I did a little while back that also nobody watched, but that's a whole nother set of problems. People that like video essays. <laughs> bro, I, it's crazy how he keeps saying this shit. And it's like, bro, 200,000 people, bro. What the hell? <laughs> aren't really attracted to, like they're not a drama hungry audience. I'm not a streamer or reaction channel. So the type of energy that you have to have for those that type of content attracts that type of viewership. And those viewers might pop in on a dropping video, but they're not gonna stay. Most people do not care that there are assholes saying mean things about you in your comment section or on Twitter. True. They don't even use Twitter because they're normal, healthy people. Like I am now, ever since I started oh, you deleted using it. Twitter. Congratulations. Shout out to me for that. One that's great big, thing about that's a big YouTube win. is that it's huge. It's I way it you, bigger brother. than I think a lot of us imagine. Like. There's people in that Wonder drama Moon. video that I've never heard of that have millions of subscribers and get millions of views per video. Oh, wait, this is dealing with Wendigoon? Oh, my God. Please don't tell me this is some petty shit. Oh, my God. Like, I'm thinking about the, the channel and I'm thinking about Wendigoon. These two people have beef? Why? It's probably over some petty shit because they both... Bro, Wendigoon, I talked about, I, I legitimately saw this Call of Cthulhu video yesterday, right? I didn't finish, I got like 45 minutes in, right? But he talks about a bunch of freaky, other otherworldly stuff anyway, right? Versus people that watch horror movies, which usually is some freaky, otherworldly stuff. Bro, this, I hope, oh man, this, actually, I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't know, no. I feel like I just wanted to say that story because I wanted to like, 
I'm trying to guess it because there's usually that one person in the comments, shout out, if that's you, that I'm like, okay, I don't understand. And then they'll leave a comment breaking it down for me. I appreciate that. I always do, honestly. No clue who they are. Thank you. And if you make good stuff consistently and you have a channel that's healthy and growing, you will always bring new people to you with every video you make that won't be aware of whatever drama you were involved in two or three videos ago. And if you keep making good stuff and keep presenting the type of work that you want and you stand by in your content, that is what will speak for you, not the grand drama video you where you respond to all your haters and naysayers, etc. Having anti-fans on Twitter or Reddit or insert whatever other space That's is normal. never going to measure up That's normal, to making bro. sure that you're doing what you have to do to please the people that had enough faith in your content to click subscribe after watching one of your videos. Most of your viewers are not online enough to be invested in drama or be swayed by bad faith attacks that others are making. And, and this is the part where it's like right and wrong, right? So this is where I got an... Uh let you know i don't even know significant besides like actual channel fd signifier right fd signifier this is where i gotta let you know bro that that's not true because bro a lot of people that watch v2 content right because you don't even go to that site well you know like sniper wolf but i don't know if you know like gigguk and them but they because they eye patch wolves gigguk like all of them they're on like another side of the internet and like deeper on that side is like around VTubers and stuff. And they're always online all the time, right? Because they're a younger audience. So, you know, that's not necessarily true. It also, it depends on the channel, right? My channel, for example, is people that's always online, but I have no idea what the hell they be doing, to be honest about you on Twitter and your comment section. By making Maybe your on Twitter, content though. about drama that you're in, all you end up doing is polluting that population of new viewers with That's stuff true. that distracts from the video that you have for your art and your channel. People that just found you, which by the way, for video essays is incredibly important because they dictate how the algorithm sees you. Those people that are new to your channel will now stop responding to the content that you truly stand behind and take a sabbatical to figure out what drama you were in last month or months ago. They're trying to figure out why a couple of months ago you were in a Twitter fight with anime avatar guy number 684 <laughs> about whether or not this Purple. bizarre, <laughs> uncharitable interpretation of something you said nah, is valid or not. And it doesn't seem valid most of the time in isolation. But here you are making a big deal about it on your own channel, yeah. and then suddenly it seems it plausible. Drake? It's genuinely really never worth it. Unless you do something truly egregious that has your real fans loudly clamoring for you to address it, then just keep making good stuff. Keep focusing. Also known as, if you didn't really do something crazy and illegal, then don't worry about it. On the thing that made you upload in the first place, and you'll never fail. James Somerton hmm. had been called out for plagiarism multiple times before the H Bomber Guy video exposed him. And until that video was made, none of the plagiarism accusations made a difference in James Somerton's growth. And there's still going to be people in my comments saying, who is James Somerton, even after H Bomber Guy's video has over 20 million views. So I guarantee you a handful of angry Bro, tweets or maybe a thousand big. angry tweets will not and make a difference to the health of your <laughs> channel or the nature of your content if you just make sure that the next thing you come out with is good and is true to what you actually are about. You're only as good as your next video. Remember that. Or you're only as good as your next whatever. It doesn't even have to be a video. Whatever you do in your life, you're only as good as your next one. Sad truth. You're only as good as your All of this to say in this first part shit. is that if you're a video essayist or even a commentary person, stay in your lane. Focused on what made you start making videos and uploading them to this goofy ass website. Clearing your Goodbye. name, especially when the vast majority of the people who take issue with you don't really care and are just fucking with you because that's what people do on the internet is a waste of time. The people that were hating on you will just find some other angle to hate about and the people Mental who are gymnastics. supporting you we're already supporting you to begin with. Now within Praise of Shadows, it is a bit tougher because he felt like he was being targeted by someone with a much bigger audience who also makes similar content to his. But even if that's the case, real talk, that's low-key a net positive for the healthier channel because it- You're gonna get more viewers. 
But yeah, you're gonna probably get some dick riders and not the good time. It just means that you are connecting your algorithm to that person's algorithm. So you're gonna be consistently siphoning people off of their channel. One of the worst results of drama you can see right now, you can pause and Google and praise the shadows. Crazy and stuff. I guarantee you before his channel comes up, there's gonna be like five to 10 response videos about the drama that he's gotten in. That's what really happens when you do a drama video. Instead, he should have maybe threw a couple of subliminals, maybe a quick jab and a name drop, and then call it a day. Make it mysterious. If you really feel the need for some get back and understand, I still get my get back. I'll be up in people's comment sections. Y'all don't be seeing that shit though. You're doing the same thing, bro. <laughs> Just not like that anymore. I used to do it like that, but not really anymore. Why are we letting motherfuckers know? I feel it's you know. not on my actual content though because here's the thing these types of conflicts are never about the actual facts or realities of a given situation they're usually about who has more clout and whose clout has more capacity to speak for them it's about who has the strongest connection to the largest group of people that will believe in them or maybe the connection to the reaction in drama streamer economy it's hardly ever going to be about true. what makes the most sense it's going to be about whose fan base is most willing to argue on the internet about whatever the issue is who and to get more? even more real Digital. if you're a leftist or progressive or even just a left-leaning moderate if your conflict is in any way based in something more complex and esoteric than i don't know wrestling or some shit no i can't even say wrestling what's really simple if your conflict is in any way based on something Ooh, more complex and esoteric than like a saturday morning cartoon if you're expecting i don't know papa gut to get the nuance of critical race theory and how that pertains to the drama that you're in Good luck with ever feeling like you're actually going to be arguing on the same level as the people you're arguing with. Whatever you're saying will be misrepresented. Shout out to Papa Gut. He's actually, I've watched him a little bit. He's probably as good as the drama streamers get. No shade, Papa Gut, I'm sorry. Your name is Papa Gut though. It was like low hanging fruit. That was, but you know. More like, views for him, I'm sorry, to be honest. But you know what the worst win. thing is about being a video essayist? What? being smarter and better than everyone else that makes content on this platform and having to act like we're on the same level well that's just life brother that's just life in general but that's talking about the quiet part out loud why should i take the opinion of some asshole seriously because he watched my video while playing fortnite smoking weed and talking to 45 people in his chat with cat headphones on and some of these motherfuckers don't even take showers and the rooms look like they stink I am not pressed about their opinions, and you shouldn't be either. I'll be damned. I'll be damned if I listen to facts about the mouth of a man with an unwashed ass. Damn. Did you watch your body? I have seen people react <laughs> to my videos, and I'll say something, and they'll completely miss that I said it, and then ask why I didn't say that exact thing that I just fucking said that they would have heard if there wasn't some goofy ass sound effect going off in the middle of their screen because someone gave them $3 or some shit for. A resub or whatever that shit is on Twitter. Yo, he cooking him. He cooking him, bro. He cooking him. He cooking him. For them he sitting there him. watching my video. So, like, why? Like, think about how dumb it is to sit and do research and write a script and like have quotes from critical theorists and historical data, knowing that they'll just respond to with the equivalent of, nah, uh you sound sore, you so smug. And then the funniest part the hell? is that they'll say on their like channel with like 25,000 subscribers, with 45 people in their chat, who's gonna sit and watch a 90 minute video essay? Like literally Bro. millions of people. We are a large genre on this platform. A video essay is on like the platform as a whole, right? And I've been on the platform for 12, 14, something. It's been a while, right? A lot of years. Uh, video essays probably come up with the most intellectually unique content. I would say it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They make some dope content if you like to just listen and brainstorm and think about shit. Some other people make great content, but it's more for like entertainment, like laughing and ha ha he he and but you know some of these people do have funny ass but like well bro i done laughed in this video like how many times <sighs> there's a scene in idiocracy 
that perfectly encapsulates what it's like to try to have like an intelligent discourse with the type of people that will argue about your nonsense in the comment section or on a reaction stream. Just get me well enough to get back to base. Right. <laughs> Kick ass. Well, uh, don't want to sound like a dick or nothing, but uh, it says on your chart that you're fucked up. Uh, you talk like a f and your shit's all retarded. Well, damn. <laughs> That's how they be. It is a waste of time and effort. Save it for your next piece. If you're not a true drama creator, then you don't have the audience that cares or is invested in drama. Even if you do have a blow up moment from a drama video or something, mm -hmm. those are people that are not really going to return when it's content you're truly passionate about. Unless whatever you got yourself into is egregious, few people actually care. And in reality, there's nothing you can do to truly defend yourself from whatever criticism you're getting because the bad faith actors will just make up a new angle or they're also possibly too dumb to get what you're actually saying in the first place. According to whichever group of haters you talk to, I hate black men or I hate black women. I'm too nice to white people, but I also hate white people. I'm too radical and extreme, but I'm also a filthy liberal who works for the CIA. And don't get me started on what? the attack on Titan yeah, fans. I Them hate. motherfuckers hate my guts. Facts. And that's not even getting into the handful of people I actually had drama with before I figured out how to avoid this shit. And nice. some of y'all probably clicked on this video because you thought I was gonna talk about the motherfuckers, but I didn't, but you know, run and tell them. Some of their channels could use the boost. The numbers look oh. kind of but again, that boost will not last. People are gonna call me smug and arrogant. They're gonna make fun of video essayists for being. Bro, I mean, you're definitely going on like a a, a power a intellectual power trip, but it's not like it's not deserved, right? Like you can be as superficial as you want to and just say, look at the numbers, right? But when you actually sit and you think about the content that this man has actually made, like I've sit and I've digested many a video from FD Signifier and he has legitimately helped mold me in the right direction, right? As someone, it, as someone who, right? I'm not trying to dox my life, you feel me? But I'm gonna say it like this. If you feel like you don't know where to really look for a positive male role model, right? I would not be ashamed if you said you looked at this man right here. His, he, like, everybody has their own personal issues or whatever. Everybody has their own life, whatever. But this man is living a very, very, very successful life. And I'm not talking just YouTube. I'm like, if you legitimately look at this man's life, a wife, children, stable income, popular, right has amazing life stories this is the guy and that's all the glaze i'm gonna give him but you don't need the he kind of don't need the boost i'm on record he don't need the he don't need it but fuck those people like seriously make good shit for the people that like you that's the glory of this job that's the that's um also part of just like being an entertainer right you make the content that you know your fans like right at the same time, you will, you might end up, you know, wanting to do something else. And that's totally normal. But you still have to keep this attitude, right? You still have to be true to who you are as a creator, right? Just because these people over here like you for this and these people over here like you for that, that doesn't mean you aren't being true to who you are. You get me? It's probably a hard one for some of you. Like, if y'all don't make content, if y'all if y'all legitimately like do not make YouTube videos, you won't understand. Until you make YouTube videos, you put them out on the internet, and you actually get uh, some type of viewer base, right? You get familiar with the people in your comment section. I don't think you'll truly understand what the fuck I just said, but you can try to understand. Make good shit for the people that like you. That's the glory of this job. You cannot be normal about this stuff. And the bigger you get, the more not normal you must be because you're not in a normal situation. 
In a normal situation, if a person has a problem with you, it's just probably one person. You probably have a decent understanding of how their problem was developed and how to respond. If this were a normal situation and some of these people saw you on the street, they wouldn't have the balls to talk to you in person like they do on Twitter or in your comment section. If it were normal, not. defending yourself like in Praise of Shadow did would make sense. But we're video essayists and we're not normal. So you have a 25% chance at best at understanding this reference. Mm. The right way to handle shit like this is to just endure the drama cycle then go back to making good content. Within a week, someone else will do something bad. The creators who depend on drama will have to move on because unlike you, they're not all that creative. They don't have anything interesting that they can produce on their own. They need us. So let these motherfuckers starve. Just be on your best behavior. Like don't do any really problematic shit that will actually- You know what I really love about this too? It's like, he's talking about me too, right? Yes and no. Right. Because I've been on the I've been on the Internet for a long, 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 long time. Done a lot of shit. Right. But I understand where he where he's coming from with this. Right. As a reactor. And as someone that has participated in drama before, but it wasn't uh, like a participation of mudslinging. It was more like, hey, maybe we should wait or maybe we should wait till this happens or, oh, damn, this happened. So let's actually talk about it and break down, you know, what happened, how it went wrong how we can adjust it if it ever arises again and where can we go from now, right? It's been more of an intellectually, uh, it, it was more of an intellectual conversation when it came to whatever drama that I found myself in front of when I turned on my camera, right? But I get what he's saying, bro. And it is also true. If you are sitting and making content, like legitimate, not content, if you're sitting and making art, you're making videos, you're legitimately sitting on your ass and you are crafting a video from making a script to take doing voice takes over and over to hiring people, right? If you're legitimately putting like the most best effort, yeah, you're going to have other people that come around and just react to the video or just talk about the video or do a drama or whatever, right? As many hours it took you to make that one video, they made five of the same type of videos in that day, right? It's going to suck, but at the same time, that's also just part of the ecosystem on YouTube and just in general. And if anything, it's it's interesting because like we elect representatives to vote in our best interest when it comes to politics. It's almost essentially doing the same thing with drama tubers, because if you are a Hassan supporter, right, and Hassan is reacting to a drama, you're going to get his take. Whatever you want to say, Hassan is politically, I don't watch him, so I don't really know. Versus uh, you watch, uh, insert uh, another political streamer, right? Or XQC, because he's not even really a political streamer. He just likes to get into shit, right? And we all know how XQC acts. So you watch his reaction and you watch Hassan's reaction to the same thing. You're not going to get the same results. But it's kind of like that when it's uh, whenever you're watching these these YouTubers, you're supporting them by watching them, but you're also spreading their ideology and their opinion. Whether you want to or you enjoy it or not, you know, that's where you like use the, the thumbs up or the thumbs down or you leave a comment saying you liked it or you hated it. Right. There's different discussions, but regardless, it's all in these different areas on the Internet but it's all still surrounded upon your one video, which is really good. It helps everybody. So yeah, I think you guys should keep making your amazing art, your amazing content. If some of you like bust out like a 20 minute video, like once a week, but it's like super heavily edited, like shout out to y'all. Even though it's work, it's, it's still kind of art as well. You know, a, a lot of people I know that make hard, like they'll make videos, but they don't make videos because they're passionate about it. They think they make videos because it makes money, right? So it's your job, it's your career, but it still has a bit of art in it anyway, because you didn't always probably start with that drive for just money. The money just came and you know, it is what it is. Now, if, if FD Signifier drops a video uh, every two days, we get like a new video. I wouldn't complain personally, because I just enjoy his content versus random Joe Schmo 420 drops 30 fucking videos. And it's like, yeah, they're going to get views, right? But it also helps towards the ecosystem, even if he doesn't look successful 
or he maybe even isn't successful on the platform. Yeah, I know it was a big ass word salad. I know I was yapping, but I yap. It's just what I do. Actually get you canceled by your real audience. But if it's mean, people on Twitter, Reddit, haters in your comment section, whatever it is, Fuck. I'll leave you with the wise words of Jay-Z. <laughs> and all you other cats throwing shots at Jigga, you only get half a ball. Fuck y'all niggas. Earlier in this video. Damn, there was another bar. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't really listen to Jigga, bro. Uh, you gotta get somebody younger. Uh, fuck them haters, some shit. I don't know. I mentioned I don't remember another day. This is because he was recently exposed as pretty much the worst type of video essayist the genre okay. has to offer in this video by top tier video essayist H Bomber Guy. Okay. In this nearly four hour long video, to be fair though, only about two hours is dedicated to James. That day of sex video is really good. H-Bomb exposes everything that James Summerton has done to really tarnish the very core of what it means to be a video essayist. And if you aren't one of the 22 million people that watch this on YouTube, but you're intrigued by the idea of such a long video exposing someone else, you might want to do yourself a favor and watch this video ad free on me and H-Bomber Guy's streaming service Nebula. I spent a little time self-aggrandizing video essays, and that was somewhat hyperbole, but also these are my legit feelings and Nebula is a big reason why. Nebula is an independent streaming platform where many of YouTube's most talented, forward-thinking, and ambitious creative forces come together to do our best to go beyond the limitations of what YouTube presents us. For Damn, that glaze was crazy. They basically said YouTube is hindering their, their ability to make great content, which is also true. For example, I'm maybe not giving myself I enough credit it. for the amount of views that this drama video I made last year got. It didn't get as many views as I wanted, but part of the reason for that was that I had to re-upload it three times because YouTube kept demonetizing it because of a nearly inaudible F-bomb I left in the first 10 seconds of the video, something I had to fight to figure out, all while losing money with every hour the video wasn't live. That was just the tip of the iceberg of the types of things that you have to go through to make more ambitious content on YouTube. But that video- Which is why I disguise mine in reaction videos. Yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and try and help y'all. And it's like, the shit ain't working because there are legitimately people that will silence us legitimately. There are several big channels that I personally have respected that have had to basically disappear off the face of the earth and I ain't gonna say the name, sorry. Video was only uploaded once on Nebula and in its intended form along with all of my videos, which may have had to be butchered in order to make them okay for YouTube. But beyond that, Nebula also hosts videos that just can't be on YouTube. For example, another legendary essayist, Lindsay Ellis, made a near two hour video on the Beatles. Or if you wanna get away from media analysis, Real Life Lore has an entire series on war conflicts in the Middle East. For a variety of reasons, I these types of videos out. just can't be on YouTube, at least not yeah. without forcing creation. Some, some shit about life, you don't get to really talk about on this platform, but I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm definitely gonna check out Nebula. I think you guys should too. To not get Link in the description, check out the rest of the video. It's your boy Kunshan, signing out. Okay, make sure I wasn't missing nothing. All right, y'all have a good day. Good night, bye-bye.